Even a car can be a place of deep conversations. Today, in the car, I asked one of the brothers if he had devotion to St. Joseph. He said to me, I do. And he in turn, this brother in turn, asked me if I had Saint, devotion to St. Joseph. And I tried really hard, like out of humility, to say, no, I don't have as much as I want, or, you know, and well, not, not enough, or that type of thing. And I ended up saying, yeah, I do too. I, I, I love St. Joseph. <laughs> And I do ask him for things. If you would ask, like, why do I have devotion to St. Joseph? Why do I have so much devotion? Um, first of all, because he's like the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's a big deal. Today, the reading that the priests have to do is from St. Juan Damasceno, St. John Damascene. And I think it's from him, this other quote, where he, he says how uh, the souls of those who are married are often similar. That's not always the case. It's not always the case, obviously. You can have a wife who believes and a husband who doesn't believe, or vice versa. But in the case of, of St. Joseph and Our Lady, I'm convinced that they had very similar souls, that they weren't just husband and wife, that they were truly, in the deepest sense of the word, soulmates. And as Catholics, we know like, like a Virgin Mary, she's like the Virgin Mary. She's assumed into heaven. She was conceived without original sin. She bilocated to, uh, to St. James. Yeah, she's mother of the church. You know, she's, nah, you can't say anything like too good about her. And then to think that she was the spouse of St. Joseph and that he would have been the most similar possible for a human soul to be like. Pretty impressive. <laughs> you can imagine like whenever the sun, there's moments when you look up to the sky and it's the same color as, as the sea. Or the, the sea starts to become that blue color of the sky. Or at times when the, the lake reflects the mountains and the snow-covered hills which are around it kind of see like the beauty of to say that uh, Our Lady and St. Joseph have souls which reflect each other, which are both reflecting God in their own way. There's a lot of scenes I, I, I start to think about and I start to, to chew on. I imagine like St. Joseph and Our Lady, imagine the conversations they would have had going down to Egypt. Imagine the things they would have talked, talked about. Imagine those times of silence, which happens among those who are deep friends, that are silences which are filled with unity. They're both in silence, but they both agree. They both are pondering, they're both savoring the same, the same moment, the same idea, and they don't even have to open their lips, and you can tell that there's this perfect ding, there's a perfect harmony between both of them. I like to imagine uh, as that scene where you can you can think you can just uh, you can picture your mind when Saint Joseph would have been you know looking at the Blessed Virgin Mary and thinking, isn't she beautiful? Like whispering it to like to to Jesus, so they're both looking at her, and and Jesus responding, I wonder if she's the most beautiful in the world. There was like moments where they, they would have agreed. And she would have, imagine like them saying that and like looking, because there's moments when somebody does something that's so kind and so beautiful. Imagine like maybe they came home from a hard day at work where nothing went well and they're, they're still like, they're literally like with their, their, their tools in their hands still and they're dripping, their, their clothes is dripping, they all walk through the door and everything's ready. The bread is still, is warm. She timed it perfectly. The food, everything is clean, just arriving. She has a big smile and has the change of clothes for each of them and the towel ready. And they, they both are thinking the same thing. She's amazing. They both agree. They don't have to say anything. They look at each other and they look at her and they, they're thinking both the same thing. And you can imagine like also those moments when, can you imagine when like Jesus was heading off uh, was trying to sneak downstairs to pray alone 
or sneak somewhere to pray alone, and he catches Joseph in his spot ahead of him. How they both would have been, what do you think he learned to pray in the night, which was his custom? Probably St. Joseph, probably from his dad. And it's so beautiful that how Joseph, that silence of Joseph is so fascinating. Like the fact that when he finds his kid doing something which could be considered wrong, like running away when he's 12 years old, staying in the temple, and he doesn't say any, he doesn't, doesn't, just the mother says, why have you done this to us? How, and Jesus, and why did you do this to us? And St. Joseph doesn't say anything. There's no, his heart was probably saying something very similar to Our Lady's, but he doesn't even think it necessary to speak. So yes, the answer is I do have devotion to St. Joseph. I think he's fascinating. I think it's, it would be amazing to spend time with him, to ask him about the scriptures, to ask him how he, how he lived with, with, with the Blessed Virgin, to ask how, he, how it was to hold Jesus for hours in his, in his, in his arms. Yes, it's, it's, it's worthwhile having devotion to St. Joseph. And he's something that all of us can learn from. I don't care if someone's a priest. I don't care if someone's the Pope. I don't care if, if you're a father of a family. Everyone, all of us, can learn from St. Joseph. He has his humility, his sense of, of justice and work, his sense of responsibility, his sense of being open to the Holy Spirit. Because it's true that Our Lady heard it from the lips of Joseph. Can you imagine like what it would be like? Also his tact, like his way of doing things. Because imagine how he must have been when he wakes Our Lady up at three o'clock in the morning to tell, her, to tell her with all sincerity that he had a dream and that they're supposed to go immediately to Egypt with what they had on. Imagine how he would have, how tactful he would have been in doing that difficult task that Our Lady, that God had asked him to do through the angel. I think we all need those virtues. And it's beautiful because this is not some fictitious person of a fairy tale. This is a real person who had real difficulties and really loved Jesus and really loved Mary. So you can ask him to intercede for us today on his feast day and ask him to have some share in, in his heart. Amen.